The title is Distinctions. Mandarb's hooves beat a familiar rhythm on broken ground as land man dragoman rode towards his death. The dry air made his throat rough, and the earth was sprinkled white with crystals of salt that precipitated from below. Distant red rock formations moved to the north, where sickness strained, stained them. Bite, light marks, a creepy dark light. He continued to the east, parallel to the blight. This was still Calvita, where his wife had deposited him, only narrowly keeping the promise to take him to the borderlands. It had stretched before him for a long time, this road. He turned away from it 20 years ago, agreeing to follow Moraine, but he'd always known he would return. This was what it meant to bear the name of his father's, the sword on his hip, and the hadori on his head. This rocky section of northern Saudia is known as the Fosca Flats. It was a grim place to ride, not a plant grew on. The wind blew from the north, carrying with it a foul stench, like that of a deep sweltering mire loaded with corpses. The sky overhead stormed dark, brooding. That woman, Lamb thought, shaking his head. How quickly Nynaeve had learned to talk and think like an ACI. Riding to his death in pain, but knowing she feared for him, that did her very badly. He hadn't seen another person in days. The Saldians had fortifications to the south, but the land here was scarred with broken ravines that made it difficult for Trollocs to assault. They preferred attacking their Maradon. That was no reason to relax, however. One should never relax this close to the bite. He noted a hilltop. That would be a good place for a scout's post. He made certain to watch it for any sign of movement. He rode around the depression in the ground, just in case it held any ambushes. He kept his hand on his bow. Once he traveled a little farther eastward, he cut down into Salvia and crossed Candor on its great roadways. Then some gravel rolled down a hillside nearby. Land carefully slid an arrow from the pivot tied to Mandarp's saddle. Where had the sound come from? To the right, he decided. Southward, the hillside there. Someone was approaching from behind it. Land did not stop Mandarp. If the hook was changed, it would give warning. He quietly raised the bow, feeling the sweat of his fingers inside his palm high gloves. He knocked the arrow and pulled carefully, raising it to his cheek, leaving in its scent. Goose feathers, resin. A figure walked around the southern hillside. The man froze, an old, shaggy named pack horse walking around beside him, and continuing on ahead. It stopped only when the rope around its neck he tore. The man wore a laced tan shirt and dusty breeches. He had a sword at his waist, and his arms were thick and strong, but he didn't look threatening. In fact, he seemed faintly familiar. Lord Mandragon, the man said, hastening forward, pulling his horse after. I found you at last. I assume that you travel in the tunnel road. The man lowered his bow and stopped the man by. Do I know you? I brought surprise, my lord. The man had black hair and tan skin. Borderlander stopped, probably. He continued forward, over eager, yanking on the overloaded pack horse's rope with a thick finger's hand. I figured that you wouldn't have enough to tank, pour off in just in case, some water too, feed for the horses, and who are you, Landlord? And how do you know who I am? The man drew up sharply. I'm Gilded, my lord, from Candor. Lang remembered a gangled young messenger boy. With surprise, he saw the resemblance. Julian, that was 20 years ago, man. I know, Lord Mandragoran. But when word spread in the palace that the golden thing was raised, I knew what I had to do. I learned the sword well, my lord. I've come to ride with you, and the word of my travel has spread to Ace de Char. Ace de Char? Yes, my lord. El Nani, she came to us, you see, told us what you've done. Others are gathering, but I left first. Maybe we were surprised. Earn that woman, Lang thought, and she made him swear that he would accept those who wished to ride with him. Well, if she could play games with the truth, then so could he. Lang had said he'd take anyone who wished to ride with him. This man was not mounted. Therefore, Lang could refuse him. A petty distinction. 
But 20 years of Asa died had taught him a few things about how to watch one's words. Go back to Ace the Shah, Lang said. Tell them that my wife was wrong and I have not raised the golden crown. But I don't need you, son. Away with you. Lang's heels nudged Mandog into a wall and he passed the man standing on the road. For a few moments, Lang thought that his order would be obeyed, though the evasion of his oath pricked at his conscience. My father was more caring, Dylan said from behind. Lang continued on. He died when I was five, Dylan called. He married a Kandori woman. We both felt a bad bandit. I don't remember much of them. Only something my father told me, that someday we would fight for the golden crane. All I have of him is this. Lang couldn't help but look back as Mandar continued to walk away. Dylan held up a thin strap of leather, the Hadori, worn on the head of a Mulcary, sworn to fight the shadow. I would wear the Hadori of my father, Dylan Crow, or Squirm Rather, but I have nobody to ask if I may. That is the tradition, is it not? Someone has to give me the right to tell me. Well, I would fight the shadow all my days. He looked down at the Hadori, then back up again and yelled, I would stand against the darkness. Alan Mandragoran, will you tell me I cannot? Go to the dragon reborn, Lan called to him, or to your queen's army. Either of them will take you. And you? You will ride all the way to the Seven Towers without supplies? How farish. Pardon me, my lord, but have you seen the land these days? The bright creeks farther and farther south. Nothing grows, even in once fertile lands. The game is scarce. Land hesitated. All those years ago, you and Paul, walking forward, his pack horse walking behind him, I hardly knew who you were, though I know you, know you lost someone dear to you among us. I spent years cursing myself for not serving you better. I swore that I would stand with you someday. He walked up beside by him. I ask you, because I have no father, may I wear the Hadori and fight at your side? Alan Mandragoran, my king. And we go slowly, still in his emotion. Nani, when next I see you. But he would not see her again. He tried not to dwell on that. He had made an oath. He said I wiggled around their promises. But did that give him the same right? No. A man was his honor. He could not deny David. We ride anonymously, the man said. I do not raise the golden crown. You tell nobody who I am. Yes, my lord, you can say. Then wear that Hadori with pride, Lang said. Too few keep to the old ways. And yes, you may join me. Lang nudged Mandarg into motion. You have followed on foot. And the one that gave to.